Uh, happy to be here. Thanks for coming. Appreciate your uh, support and covering us. Um, we've enjoyed uh, having some great coverage from all the stations the past couple of years, and uh, it's great to grow the Duke brand and great to grow the uh, players and members of our team and all the support staff and in the game in general. The game has taken off like crazy. You see the World Cup with the women right now. You see that the U.S. will be hosting the next Men's World Cup, so lots of fun things ahead. And we're all looking forward to our season here. Some older gentlemen here on my left and right that are seniors and with a lot to prove and have had a great careers and are hungry for more. Well, Coach, we were told that uh, coming in at number four, so what does that say for your team coming in? I think it's all based on last year. We don't really pay too much attention to the polls, especially this time of the year. So we don't really worry about that too much. We're just worried about uh, our team and how we're progressing. And we have a nice little scrimmage tonight to take care of with UNC Wilmington, who's a really good team. So the polls don't matter to, that, to us that much at, at this point. It is, though, John, your highest preseason ranking since 07. So what does that say about growing the Duke brand under your tutelage? I guess it means that we had a really good leader last year. And um, we have some great players coming back. And we've had a, a couple of really decent players as well. So um, those are high aspirations for us. And uh, we'll try to live up to them. But it doesn't really, we don't sit around thinking about the polls at the moment. So we'll move on from that. What do you consider the strength of this team? When, you, when, you, when this team goes out on the field, what do you think you rely on? What is there that you know you can count on? Um, well, we have four starting defenders coming back with a lot of experience. So I like to think of our performances in the past two years defending and also with everyone coming back. We have an excellent goalkeeper with Julian coming in um, to add to that defense. So we feel that's probably our biggest strength, to be honest with you. For each of the players, just coach said you need a lot to prove. Senior year, after that exit in the quarterfinals, just how much does that kind of drive you guys this year, coming off of that? Go ahead, Amir. Um, no, I mean, yeah, you know, after the quarterfinal exit last year, it's really like heartbreaking, but we're trying to get back, get back to the semifinal season, win the whole thing, you know? So, and you know, senior year, getting older, getting more experience, we're just trying to get better and better as we go. Yeah, like Amir said, um, we have a lot of returning guys that have tasted a bit of success, but um, we didn't get as far as we wanted to get. So I think it's it's a good mixture of desire, and now we have a bit of experience, and we'll feel a little more comfortable when we get in that position again, and uh, we can really concentrate on getting further along this year. So, yeah, lots of desire to get there. John, Bo Bo Go ahead. I was going to say, both you guys, I mean, you just got two losses last year. I mean, that's a an intensity that's kind of hard to keep up. What do you do to maintain that fire? Because I mean, that's I mean, just two losses is kind of you know unheard of. Yeah, I mean, I think we don't really think of avoiding losses as much as what we want to achieve, which is winning the ACC again, getting farther in the tournament, getting to the Final Four, winning a national championship. So I say that's the driving force instead of you know trying to avoid any losses or anything. I think uh, there's a lot to look forward to, and we've just been working really hard to to get there again and further this year. Yeah, I would say that, you know, avoiding losses is, isn't really our main goal, but obviously a part of our overall goal, you know, winning the whole thing, winning the AC championship again. I mean, winning the ACC regular season, and I mean, our, our goal is just to get better every season. So last season when we got two losses, we don't want to take any losses this year. Is there any pressure off that? I mean, because I want to see you guys were, didn't take an L in ACC play either. I mean, you know, a couple of, uh, you know, uh, ties there. Uh, is any pressure on anything like that to at least maintain what was last year, or is this whole new year legislation? Um, I don't feel like there's any outside pressure, at least, but because we have a group that's so hungry and want to um, achieve more as we go on, I feel like the pressure comes from in, inside our, our locker room and our team. So I guess no pressure from outside, but inwards, we just want to be better and better every year. Yeah, I mean, any pressure that comes with that, we're happy to have. It means we've done well in the past, so, you know. That's the type of place you want to be that has a bit of pressure, has an expectation to do well. So, um, yeah, any pressure that comes with it, we're, we're happy to have. But like you said, it's mostly internal.
no pressure to be too big to your <laughs> Not in that way. John, you mentioned Julian already. You've now played a freshman goalkeeper in well, as long as I can remember. Does that pose a new challenge, or is it just with a veteran line in front of him? You fit. It's just. No, for sure there'll be a learning curve for all of us with Julian himself, with the back four and the whole team trying to blend in and make sure we're on the same page. Communication is one of the biggest things that a goalkeeper has to do and getting those moments right at the right time uh, is something that we're working on right now. We've only had one scrimmage so far. We've been in camp about a week, so we're kind of developing our relationships as we speak. Um, but certainly it does ease the pain when you have four guys ahead of you, experienced guys, not just like sophomores or rising juniors. We have elder statesmen back there that uh, have been around and played a lot of games. So it'll make that transition easier and quicker. And Julian's experience as well. He's been playing with uh, the Dallas two team, North Texas, in the uh, MLS Next program. So he's experienced in terms of playing with men and uh, he's poised for a young, young man. And, and you can tell by how he handles himself, and uh, we're very lucky to have him. I think uh, there'll be some bumps in the road, but certainly we're going to be strong back there. So you went back to your old stomping grounds to find a keeper? Yes, very much so. 20 to 3, uh, how are you adapting to life without Peter and Shaq in the midfield and offense? Who? <laughs> <laughs> Hope they see that. <laughs> Any of the three? Uh, oh, I'll just say, um, yeah, I mean, there'll be big misses, of course. Um, we know what both of them could do and what they both offer to the team in many aspects, not just on the field. Um, but we have guys coming in, guys that have been here and are experienced and played lots of minutes last year um, that I know I and the rest of us have full confidence in. Um, and I'm really excited to see what they do now with these holes opening up, there's just more opportunities for new guys to step in, and um, I think we're all really excited for it. John, who would, are you looking to to replace some of those goals? Because between Jack and, and uh, Peter, the, the bulk of your goals came from them. Yeah, no, there's no doubt we're going to miss Peter and Shaq for sure. Their intensity level on a daily basis and their character and their uh, – comedic uh, figures on our team that we miss them dearly. At the same time, we've added some really good, strong, talented, uh, different style players in those two, and I think we'll be even more formidable up front. Um, we'll have uh, Ajago, Foster Ajago coming in from Dayton, who's a talented player, scored uh, probably 13, 14 goals the past two years at Dayton, and he's a force to be reckoned with. He's aggressive, and he's brave, and he's talented, and um, hungry, and then we have uh, our uh, Icelandic boy coming in to uh, to uh, replace Thor from two years ago in the same kind of uh, mentality. He likes to get on the end of things, and um, we feel that he's going to score a ton of goals for us as well and cause havoc. A little bit different style than Peter and Shaq, but uh, you know we've adapted different roles, and Nick's taken on a more aggressive offensive role this year that uh, he's going to be in the centerpiece of our offense and get more involved in, in the final third. So we just changed the dynamic a little bit with the personnel and, and a little bit of the structure of the build in the team. So it'll be a, a little bit different than what we pro, uh, posed last year and the year before, but I, I think we'll see some really good results from it. I was wondering about that. Nick, how does your role change without Peter? I saw you scored against Asheville. Uh, I'm, I'm guessing that's a reflection of your, the change in your role? Uh, yeah, I mean, there's, uh, just with Peter being out and Shaq as well, we've, we've moved some things around. Um, you know, we're not just going to play the same way necessarily because, you know, those guys play very certain ways that helped us a lot, but you can't necessarily fill one for one. Um, so with the, with the new way that, you know, we've kind of played this preseason, um, yeah, I found myself a bit higher up the field. A um, bit more central as well, and I, you know, I've enjoyed it a lot. And um, you know, more, more, just interaction with those front two guys um, seems to be the key right now. And uh, just getting in near goal, getting 
them near a goal and helping more goals go in is, is really, the, yeah, the goal right now. Key. Coach, going back to, you mentioned bringing back a lot of starters on defense. Obviously, two of them were Kong and Axel and younger guys. What have you seen from them, at least building chemistry and, and what might um, that defensive shape look like with those two guys right there? Haven't seen much of Axel yet because he's been injured from the get-go, so we're still uh, hoping to see him in the next few weeks. Um, Calm is excellent as usual. He's really gotten bigger, faster, stronger, more poise on the ball. Um, he's going to be a big force for us back there, so he's almost like a, a senior. He plays like a senior and um, with a lot of confidence, and you know we're very excited to have him back there. And, I don't think uh, we'll miss a beat in the defensive part of the field. Anything else for these guys? Yeah, John, you um, recruited a Tar Heel. So uh, <laughs> what's, how does that work out? Very good question. Um, we have a wonderful program here for the business school, one year um, program for uh, guys looking to get into the next phase of their Wall Street futures, and um, he asked, uh, he called and asked if he was, if I was interested in having him. And I've been an admirer of his, Cameron Fisher, for a, a long, for three years, and and uh, he asked if uh, I'd be interested. And we've had a lot of conversations, a lot of visits since we're so close, and we built up a really good camaraderie. And uh, I think he's going to be a great addition for us. He injured himself after the second session, so we're haven't seen the best of him yet. But uh, he'll be back in a couple of weeks here, and. And I think he'll add a nice little uh, addition for us, for sure. Okay, thank you guys. That was quick. Thanks for having us.